So I've really been focusing on trying to sleep, eat, and just take it easy, low stress, you know? I think I'm gonna have enough of that when I get underway. You stress, baby, you stress. Ooh! All right, I'm saying goodbye to Bahia de San Quentin. Here's my parting shots. Last night was crazy. Uh, it was 30 plus knot winds. I had seas build to about six to eight feet. They were following seas, so you know they'd pick you up and throw you left to right, and the autopilot would try to catch it. The autopilot never lost track the whole time. She has to work real hard. I mean, you can you can tell that just by listening to her go at it right now. But she does great in every condition, sea condition that I've had her in so far. My biggest concern when I'm in seas like that and wind like that is the rig. <laughs> I think that's the least tested part of this boat. You know, I've been through the engine, I've looked at the hull, I've taken apart all the systems the rig so that was like preoccupying my mind like all night last night it was pretty crazy times like last night it's dangerous to even be up and about i mean i came up to make scans you know but most of the time i was just seeking refuge in the v-birth because if you get up you have to be very deliberate about your movements it's easy to get thrown about the boat now boom you've got a twisted ankle a broken leg uh, something wrong with your wrist. I mean, that's the kind of thing that happens. If I drop the ball, it's gonna be there. But I'm proud of myself last night. I didn't hurt myself at all. Cause it, it was rough. It was, it got my attention. <laughs> I'm about an hour away from sunset right now. And I'm about 66 miles from the entrance to Turtle Bay. Probably will make, you know, around three knots average through the night. You know, probably sometime tomorrow, get there, maybe run in the afternoon, perhaps. My whole thing, this whole trip, has been to sail patiently and not go right to the engine. And that means sometimes to find the joy in two knot sailing, three knot sailing. To be honest, it's not that hard to find joy in that. Turtle Bay is 66 miles dead ahead. Well, I could have taken these islands down the starboard side. You know, had to approach that whole peninsula differently. I took the outside route, went around everything, and then here taking everything down the port side and just lining up on Turtle Bay from a long way out. <laughs> you can do it either way. This is just the way I did it this time. I think it just depends on how the wind presents itself, you know? We 
maybe that picture. We got three islands, I think, in that in that shot. And the moon. That's cool. And then on the other side of the boat, we have a sunset. Well, the winds are coming in from offshore this morning. They kind of shifted, so I'll be uh, I'll be anchored here in I don't know three three hours or so, and I'm hoping they have connectivity so I can do some research on predict wind and kind of figure out when the next weather window is to go because it can get pretty nasty for sure out here. Turtle Bay and you got to check this out there's a sailboat coming into Turtle Bay and I just saw it as it's entering the bay and it's cool because I'm like oh that's what I looked like just a few minutes ago <laughs> oh yeah there they are coming in the mouth of the bay there gonna try to find an anchorage luckily that's a easy task in this bay there's going to be strong winds. California Baja in Mexico. I don't know if it's Sur yet. Baja California Sur or if it's Baja California. Sometimes right after I anchor the boat, you know, I'm so tired and I knew I was so tired I was going to say some just crazy stuff. <laughs> Which, you know, it's perfect for YouTube. So I figured why not do it again? Where I sort of just capture the moment in all of its fatigue, right? It was crazy, man, because I left San Quentin. It was a two overnight trip, which is really fast for, for this boat. And the reason is, is because the first night I had 30 knot gusts. I mean, this boat was doing seven knots <laughs> for like 24 hours. And then it was doing six knots. <laughs> I think I did a 200 mile trip in 60 hours. Something like that. That's flying for me. It's definitely my longest trip. It's definitely my longest single-handed trip. I was a long way offshore, too. At one point, I have to take a look at it. But I think it was like 100 miles offshore. <laughs> <laughs> and all I did was just follow the... The wind gave me the same... I just followed it and then eyeballed the shot over. And the angle over was pretty good. So I'm starting to get a better sense for the boat and the angles involved. Uh, that's cool. So I do try to stay out of those situations, but it was nice to see how Frog's Leap handled it. It handled it without a catastrophic thing. Uh, well, that's pretty cool. Uh, it's nice just to... When you go for, you know, 60 hours straight, it's a huge, huge, like, exhale. 
and and you smile, you know, because you know it's a big accomplishment. And he's like, I did it. Yeah, that's why people do these things. I think it's for these moments right here. Look at all these birds. Right, just in like vertical. I mean, there has to be a couple hundred birds there. They have to be seeing something in the water, they're tracking. Some of them went way high, and then some of them kind of stayed low. If they start diving in the water, I need to be ready with my camera. Look at the, the sunset over here. It's casting light on this, on these hills. It's just gorgeous. Oh man. like the desolateness too of the landscape kind of adds to that whole pterodactyl feeling. Oh, they're right over. <laughs> well, I'm interested to see if this is like recurring behavior for these these uh, these birds. Do they always do this? you know, around sunset or, <laughs> I don't see them diving into the water. So it doesn't look like, like a hunting strategy, but my goodness, uh, who knows? Mm -hmm.